everybody. We're steady here again. And just a little bit ago, um, I did a short review on Frog Morton and uh, showing my uh, restored estate pipe. And uh, my friends did show up at the restaurant, and uh, we just had a wonderful lunch. And uh, now I'm smoking another bowl of what's in this one? Aaron Moore Flake. I'm smoking Aaron Moore Flake. Um, I just wanted to give some thoughts as to, uh, number one, why I smoke a pipe and, um, my comments on pipe types or in this case, pipe brands and whether or not to get really expensive pipes. Um, but let's go, go ahead and start off with why I, as a girl, chose to smoke a pipe. Well, um, I was a cigarette smoker for a long time. I, I still am. Um, however, pipe smoking allowed me to cut down. And um, one of the reasons why my uh, cigarette smoking has cut down is because of the experience of the pipe. So I dedicate the pipe for giving me the wonderful experiences through flavor and craftsmanship um, to allow me to cut back on the habit part of, uh, the coffin nails, so to speak. Um, what I really value about pipe smoking is the, how should we say, the experience of the smoke. Um, now with a cigarette, I pretty much would just put a cigarette in my mouth, inhale, exhale, get my neck hit, and that would be it. Seven minutes of nicotine hit. Um, but with a pipe, it's a little different. It allows me to slow down and uh, almost be meditative with the smoke. Um, because, at least with this pipe, um, it can take me about 45 minutes to uh, smoke a bowl. So it allows me a lot of time to just sit and just me and the pipe and the smoke. And it allows me to think a little clearer. Um, especially because I have to relax. Not that I have to relax, but it allows for a nice relaxing feeling. Um, and for over 25 years or so, it's uh, it's been rare that I've gotten many breaks during the day to be able to just sit and relax. Um, so I do look forward to my pipe sessions every day. Um, and the flavors of the different tobaccos that I've been discovering over the last few months um, have been incredible. Um, now, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm relatively new at pipe smoking. Um, I used to smoke a pipe in college for about a year, um, and then I stopped. Um, but now, 27, 28 years later, I'm back at it again um, because, you know, older and uh, able to appreciate the experience. So um, I really do value um, pipe smoking. Um, but that's why I smoke a pipe. It's not because necessarily of the nicotine. I mean, yes, you do get nicotine from smoking a pipe, um, but it's more about the experience and the art of it. Now, there is a Japanese art called Kodo. Uh, Kodo is the art of incense. And the neat thing about that particular art is that it's not just about burning incense to get rid of, you know, odors or anything like that. It's an art all its own. There are uh, kodo sets and boxes um, that are made specifically for the art of incense. There are specific ways to prepare uh, different types of incense with coals or with different types of burners. Um, there are even incense games. It's a wonderful art. Um, and I look at pipe smoking as an art also, much like kodo. Um, yes, sir, I'm sure there are people out there that will just stuff a bowl and smoke it, but I do like the experience of packing the bowl and experimenting with um, how to pack the bowl to get a short smoke, a, a long smoke. Um, I like being able to learn from my mistakes in packing, like if I get tongue bite, pack too loose, pack too hard. I like being able to learn through uh, trial and error um, with 
um, the pipe smoking, which in and, in and of itself is part of art. You learn through trial and error. Um, I also appreciate the workmanship of pipes. I appreciate the artisans that make them. Um, I appreciate the preparation of the tobacco. Um, for me, sometimes upwards of a day in advance where I'll rub out a flake and let it sit out overnight um, to prepare it for smoking the next morning. Um, I love all of it. It, it is an art. Um, all the way down to my puffing speed. Um, I've been learning my rhythm um, on how to keep the pipe lit um, or not. Um, and knowing that it's okay to relight, that I don't have to smoke a bowl all the way down to the heel without it going out. Um, that's part of the art. Um, and I love it. Uh, I do consider it an art. Um, now, speaking of pipes, let's get to the second part of what this video is all about. Um, I want to talk a little bit about quality of pipes um, and your choice of, of pipes. Now, many people like the expensive uh, pipes out there, such as Peterson, Savinelli, um, and, and other makers like that. And I do have um, a couple of Savinelli's. Um, I'm saving up money to get my own Peterson because I do appreciate the arts, uh, the artmanship. <laughs> That's not a word. The craftsmanship of the Petersons and the Savinelli's and, and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, if you're a beginner to pipe smoking, do you have to get an expensive pipe? And I would like to say, no, you don't have to. Uh, when I got back into pipe smoking uh, about four months ago, four or five months ago, I started out with a Misery Meerschaum. I started out with a corncob pipe. Um... And I must say, you know, the, they're cheap, and they smoke really well. Um, in fact, I really like burley in uh, corncob pipes, uh, but they, uh, they smoke other types of tobacco really well also. Um, so if you're a beginner um, and you're, you're wanting to get into it and see if you like it, a corncob pipe would be your best bet in trying it out because they are cheap, and if, you know, you don't like pipe smoking, then you really haven't invested all that much into the hobby. Um, However, there are also what we would call the basket pipes or the, uh, what I call the B&M pipes, the pipes that are at um, your local B&M under the counter, not on display, um, the cheaper ones. Um, and a lot of people will ask, well, are those good? Um, and when they ask, are those good, I'm guessing it's because that there's um, that believe that the more expensive the pipe, the better it is, which is true. However, um, even cheaply made pipes uh, can smoke kind of well. Now, I've got a bunch of basket pipes and no-name pipes, uh, Japanese and Chinese pipes um, that I got, uh, mainly because they were cheap, you know, like 12 bucks or 20 bucks, that kind of thing, and I just kind of wanted to get a I got those because I wanted to get a feel for the different shapes of pipes that would suit me. And uh, my local B&M had different uh, no-name pipes um, of different shapes. So I got uh, as many as I could, different shapes, um, bents, three-quarter bents, full bents, uh, straight, uh, bulldog, uh, Dublin. So I got um, a bunch of different basket pipes to try. And... To tell you the truth, out of, how many do I have, seven basket pipes, um, all of them except for one smoke really well. Um, they don't bite at all. I mean, granted, the uh, draft hole is a little bit uh, above the bottom of the bowl, um, which kind of makes for, like, waste of tobacco, because once the tobacco burns down below the draft hole, then I'm screwed, right? Um, but I took care of that by putting some pipe mud down at the bottom of the bowl. Um, but for the most part, they smoke really well. Um, this one, for example, this one's a D brand. I don't know if you guys can, it's really dark in here, but I don't know if you guys can see the uh, stamp on there. It's a D brand. Um, and it says on this side, I don't, again, it's really dark, 503 made in Holland. Um, I'm guessing this is from China, <laughs> even though it says made in Holland. <laughs> Maybe the wood was made in Holland. I don't know. Um, but even though um, 
this was a cheap pipe. This was only like about 15 bucks. Um, it smokes really well. Um, and, uh, this one is one of my aromatic, um, pipes. Um, I prefer to smoke aromatics out of this one. And, uh, it smokes cool. Uh, this one takes a nine millimeter filters. Um, it probably smokes cool because of the filters, but, um, but the other day I ran out of filters. So I put in a 7LA Balsa dry system, um, filter in here and it's working great. Um, so I don't necessarily need to go out and get Big Ben 9mm filters. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, Big Ben filters are cheaper than the 7 LA Dry System filters, but um, that's all I had today was uh, some uh, Dry System filters. So I stuck one in here, smoking really cool. Um, this particular pipe um, um, stays lit pretty easily, assuming that I light it right. Um, and I usually smoke down to the bottom of the bowl if I'm not talking. <laughs> So my pipe's out right now, but, um, because I've been talking, um, so back to, you know, do I have to get an expensive pipe? If you'd like to, and you can afford it, then by all means, I mean, uh, I want a Peterson. I, I want a, either a Peterson Donegal or a Killarney. I'm really looking at a Killarney. I've got my eye on one and uh, I'm just saving up my nickels and dimes for that. Um, uh, I've got a nice, uh, Savinelli Piuma, a small pocket pipe and a Savinelli, um, Roma. Uh, that I spent uh, about 75 bucks on. And I, I value those pipes. They're beautiful. However, um, my cheap basket pipes smoke really well too. So it's up to you. Um, because in the end, you know, it depends on what your priority is. You know, is it that you're getting into pipe smoking because of the flavor of tobacco? Or is it uh, because of the the quality and the art and the craftsmanship of the pipe or what have you. Um, for me, I started out with the flavor. So that's why I started out with a cob. Um, and like I say, cobs smoke really well. Um, but do I appreciate the craftsmanship of a good expensive pipe? Yes, I do. Would I pay a thousand bucks for one? No, I won't. <laughs> my, my price range, um, for a pipe would probably be around $150, $175. If I have to pay $300 for a pipe, um, um, I have to kind of think twice about that because that's, uh, that's two car payments for me. So, um, so, but yeah, you know, it, it depends on, um, on your budget too. Um, I think that every pipe smoker should have at least one very nice expensive pipe to put in, uh, to put in their rotation. Um, uh, either to, either to smoke regularly or for special occasions. Um, so, and I think that's what my, uh, uh, Savinelli Roma and when I get, uh, Peterson Killarney, um, that's what those are going to be. Um, special occasion, uh, probably smoke it like once every two weeks or once a month or what have you. Um, but again, that's my choice. You know, if you're a pipe smoker, do you have to have an expensive pipe? No, do I think that pipe smokers um, should have a nice expensive pipe in their collection? Yes, but again, it's just your choice. So if you're new to pipe smoking um, and you don't know if you're going to stick with it, do start with a cob, do start with a basket pipe, um, you know, and, and know that it's okay. No one's going to look down on you. Um, also, if you're a newbie to pipe smoking, I suggest getting on reddit.com and checking out the subreddit there, Pipe Tobacco. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful community um, of pipe smokers that are non-judgmental, very helpful, um, and uh, they do wonderful things like monthly uh, tobacco trades and, and stuff like that. Wonderful community. I guarantee you will have fun there if you go to Pipe Tobacco um, on uh, reddit.com. Also, um, um, if you're a lady, I suggest checking out the Yahoo group, Ladies of the Briar. Beautiful, wonderful bunch of women over there. Again, non-judgmental, very helpful. Um, and it's a nice supportive place for us women to get together and talk about pipes and tobacco and stuff like that. Not that we're against men. We love the men too. But this particular group, Ladies of the Briar on Yahoo, is specifically for women only. And if you join, they will check to make sure if you're really a woman, they'll do their research. So 
anyhow, uh, those are my thoughts on expensive or non-expensive pipes and uh, why I smoke a pipe and uh, why I appreciate the art. So thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you again later.